Honey, where are you? It's already 10 p.m. You haven't come home yet and you're not answering any of my calls. Why are you acting this way? I found the time to make you your favorite beef stew despite being in the hospital the entire day taking care of your mom. And instead of hearing a thank you from you, what do I get? The cold shoulder. You're doing God knows what at this hour without returning any of my calls. Don't you think you're being a bit selfish? That's because I don't want to see your disgusting face. It repulses me. I've been having a couple of drinks at the bar for the past few hours. I can't bear the thought of going home to be greeted by a pig like you. What the hell? Did you just call me a pig? No, so you don't like being called that. How about a hippo? Or an elephant? Be my guest to pick whatever fat, ugly animal you'd like to be called. You were a hell of a lot more attractive before we got married. I remember falling in love with you because you resembled Brooke Shields in her prime. But now look at you. You've become an older, wrinklier version of Jabba the Hutt. All of my friends' wives are just as pretty now as they were when they got married. It's all about mindset, Mary. You should have been more diligent about working out more and eating less. You failed to maintain your figure. Now look what happened to you. What the hell are you talking about? I'm 5'3 and weigh only 110 pounds and you're calling me an elephant? I actually weighed more when I first met you. At that time, I was over 120 pounds. Every time I go visit my parents, they constantly worry that I'm becoming more and more haggard. You're the only one around here who's calling me fat. Anthony, I think you need to go check your vision. Are you serious? Did you really lose weight after we got married? Then why is your face so round and chubby all the time, like a pumpkin? Well, I can only think of one possible explanation. If you didn't get uglier because of your weight, you got uglier because of your indolence. Your face is so full of wrinkles and freckles. You clearly don't put any effort to look even remotely presentable. You no longer wear makeup anymore. And you always wear the same drab clothes day in and day out. At work, I'm used to seeing attractive young women walking around dressed up like fashion models. And coming home, God, I just shudder at the sight of you. Ugh. Don't you feel anything as a woman? Don't you ever sit and wonder how you've become as unattractive as you are right now? Does it not hurt your sense of pride at all? God... You really don't think before you speak, do you? You never know when to keep your trap shut. Who do you think is responsible for making me this way, Anthony? Just think for a sec. Think real hard. I haven't been able to sleep properly for the past several years. Do you know why? Because I've been busy caring for your sick elderly mother, day and night. Ever since then, my face has become swollen. I haven't had time to put on makeup or do my hair properly. And on top of that, I have to raise our two children on my own while cooking and cleaning for you every single day. So if you think I became this way because I was lazy, you better get yourself a reality check. If you really want me to start taking care of my appearance, give me a day off during the week so that I can spend time on myself. And from now on, I want you to try bathing your mom, emptying her bedpan, and taking her to the hospital. Even if it's just once a month. Maybe you'll come to understand how tough my life has been. And until then, I really don't think you have any right to complain about how unattractive I am to you. But that's the wife's job, Mary. Are you really expecting the husband to do all of that? It's your responsibility to raise the kids and take care of the in-laws, am I right? All the other wives perform their duties without complaint, so I really don't get why you think it's unfair. Same with my family. My mom nursed my grandmother until she passed away. And my grandmother did the same for her mother, all the while taking care of the household. Mary, you need to stop taking credit for doing something that is obviously your job and complaining about how hard it is. My job? What the hell are you talking about, Anthony? Isn't it technically your responsibility to take care of your mother? She's the one who raised you, not me. Even though we're not biologically related, I diligently looked after your mom for seven whole years. So at the very least, don't you think I deserve a thank you? Okay, okay, thanks so much for everything, Mary. There, happy now? It's not funny, Anthony. Stop being such a jerk. I can't live with a wife like you anymore. You're just an extremely difficult person. 
After that old woman is gone, I want you to leave my house forever. I can't imagine living the rest of my life with an ugly hag like you. After my mom dies, I'll use the one billion dollars in inheritance to divorce you and find myself a much younger and more beautiful wife. I mean, I have my whole life in front of me. Wouldn't it just suck if I had to waste it living with someone as bland and hideous as you? Anthony, what have you been smoking? You've been spewing nonsense for the past five minutes. So you're planning on divorcing me and remarrying someone younger, huh? All this time, all you've ever done was use me as a caretaker for your mom. And once your mom dies, you're going to discard me like an old rag? <sighs> you call yourself a father and a husband? Are you even human? You should be ashamed of yourself, Anthony. What would our kids think if they overheard what you were saying to me right now? At times, you need to show determination, Mary, that you won't be held back by trivial matters of the heart. Life is tough, and sometimes you need to make tough decisions. I think that this is a very important lesson to teach our kids. But despite this, I understand all your efforts as a faithful wife and daughter-in-law. You've cared for my sick mom for these past seven years without much complaint. I would never be able to put myself in your shoes even for a day. That's what I respect about you. But I also think it's important to teach our daughter that it's useless to live your life like that. You wouldn't want our daughter to end up like you, right? Living the rest of her life tending to her sick elderly in-laws? How miserable would that be? Am I wrong? Has it ever crossed your mind that I can pack my bags immediately and go to my parents' house? Whatever happens to your mom is no longer any of my business. I know you wouldn't. Actually, you can't. If you could, you would have run away a long time, Mary. You will never be able to abandon your terminally ill mother-in-law, and you will never be able to leave the children behind. I can say this for a fact because I know you. I know what kind of person you are. You may be a strong-willed woman, but you are also fiercely devoted to your family, Mary. I respect your tough, tenacious nature, but I can't love you anymore as my wife. Anthony, you're just beating a dead horse at this point. What's the use of continuing this talk? Let's just end this, shall we? As expected from my wife, I knew you would react like that. Like I told you before, you will never be able to abandon the family. Right now, I'm enjoying some quality time with my friends at the bar. Don't wait around for me. Just go uh, visit my mom at the hospital or something. Keep her company. That's right, everyone. This is the type of husband I am living with right now. A lot of people have asked me why I'm living like this, but I just couldn't bear sending my mother-in-law to a nursing home. After getting married, I lived with my in-laws under one roof. My mother-in-law often gave me a hard time. She would make me do all the household chores and scold me if they weren't completed to her standard. Eventually, Anthony's mother became paralyzed on one side and couldn't move freely on her own. Seeing that, I couldn't help but feel bad for her. She begged me to let her stay at home and not send her away to the assistant living facility. I couldn't turn down her request. And that was how I started to care for my mother-in-law. It's already been seven years since then. It's been really exhausting at times, but I don't regret my decision. That is, up until the point when my husband started threatening to divorce me after his mom dies. There were times when I wanted to get a divorce immediately, but thinking about the past seven years I had lost, I felt it was unfair to just give up that easily. That was how I started to plan my revenge on my husband. Anthony, your mother passed away just now. Come to the hospital as soon as possible. I told you I'm busy right now. I'm having dinner with my boss. It's an important meeting that will determine whether or not I get the promotion. So stop texting me. Are you out of your mind? Your mom just passed away and you're more concerned with getting promoted? The old woman is dead. I can't bring her back. What else do you want me to do about it? The doctors already said she won't make it by the end of the week. Besides, death is a natural part of life. No one can escape it. Why are you making such a big deal out of it? It's not that deep. My mom suffered more than enough during her lifetime. She was bedridden and couldn't move freely on her own. She constantly had to be cared for. And now that she's free from her pain and misery, she's able to rest peacefully in heaven. Isn't that actually better for her? 
We're not gonna rush with the funeral arrangement, so just do whatever you want. How can you call yourself her son? Up until now, you've pushed the responsibility of nursing your sick mom onto me, all while you were sitting back and doing nothing. If you have even an ounce of humanity left in you, shouldn't you at the very least take care of your mom after her disease? I'm not saying that I won't attend her funeral. I'm just saying that I'll see her at the funeral. There's no point in trying to reason with you, Anthony. You've lost even the slightest trace of humanity. Fine. I've officially given up on you. I won't ask you for anything else. Has God finally heard my prayers? That sick old woman is dead and I'll be divorcing that monster, Mary. <laughs> finally, I'm free. Now all I have left to do is enjoy the rest of my life with the one billion dollars my late mom left me. Once I find myself a hot new wife, my life is complete. And as for you, Mary, you've worked hard caring for that nasty old woman. Don't hold too much of a grudge for the lost time. Just focus on spending the rest of your life living freely as you please. Don't worry, honey. I'm not holding a grudge. I'll soon be getting compensated for all the years of suffering I've been through. I like to think of the entire experience as paid labor rather than a daughter-in-law's duty. Compensation? Uh, what do you mean? Two years ago, your mom named me as the sole beneficiary of her entire estate. But I guess you never found out about it until now, that is. What the hell? How can you do this to me? How dare you snatch my mom's assets away from me? Have you forgotten the text message you sent me two years ago? It was late at night and you were drunk at the time. That once your mom dies, you'll divorce me and remarry someone younger? I was so shocked when I heard that. I devoted myself to this family all these years, only to be thrown away like an old shoe. There was no way I could let that happen. None whatsoever. That's when I decided to do everything in my power to ensure that you wouldn't be getting any of your mother's money. I don't believe this. I have never seen a more cruel and spiteful woman as you, Mary. So, for the past two years, you've been putting up a facade while plotting to stab me in the back? Are you telling me that I have been scammed by a worthless housekeeper like you? Sorry, Anthony, but yes. Unlike you, your mom was actually grateful toward me. She would give me allowance from time to time as a sign of gratitude. Your mom was also quite generous toward the kids, and she would buy them presents for their birthdays and whatnot. But as far as I know, you're the only one who didn't even get a dime from her. I'm sure you know the reason why. <laughs> How do you expect me to know? Uh, by chance, that old woman have memory problems like dementia? The way I see it, you took advantage of an elderly woman who was stricken with Alzheimer's. And you manipulated her into giving you all her wealth and assets. Shall we take this issue to court and let the law decide who's right? Well, your mom didn't have any hint of dementia, even during her last moments. Then explain to me why my mom decided to leave everything to you. I showed a film to your mom. It was about a character who was nearing the end of her life. She realizes that she won't be able to bring any of her possessions to the other side. Her money, her house, or her jewelry collection. So instead of clinging onto her material wealth, she decides to distribute whatever she had left to the people who loved and supported her. After fulfilling her last wishes, she prepares herself for her departure from this world. It was a very touching movie, and I think your mom came to a certain realization after watching it. And that's how me and the kids were able to receive so much money from her. It's been two years since your mom's passing. Right now, she has about one million dollars left in her bank account. Are you not aware of this? I have no way of knowing that. I'm her son, her flesh and blood. How could that crazy old woman think about handing over her money to everyone else except me? Do you think I'm just going to sit around and not do anything about this? I'm going to sue you until I get my money back. And when was the last time you brought even a glass of water for your sick mother? Oh, that's right. Never. The only reason you cared about your mom was because of her money. Before her death two years ago, your mom named me as the beneficiary of her will. So, 
I wonder how you'll be able to sue me for something that is rightfully mine. It's our joint savings, so I'm legally entitled to half of the inheritance. We didn't amass this much wealth on our own. This is definitely not a joint savings, Anthony. Nice try. If you want to fight for the money, hire a lawyer first. But before that, maybe you should consider where you're gonna live for the time being. If you're wondering why I'm bringing that up, it's because your mom already sold the house to my parents two years ago for a quarter of the market value. <laughs> what the hell? That cheaply? Your mom has been very grateful to my parents. She felt bad for making their only daughter take care of her for seven years and thankful for not being sent to a nursing home. So she allowed my parents to purchase the house at a vastly reduced price. It was your mom's way of expressing gratitude for allowing her to quietly spend the rest of her days at home. Come to think of it, my mom also helped out a lot with raising the kids and taking care of the household. Had it not been for her, I wouldn't have been able to nurse your mom all this time. Your mom was kind enough to allow my parents to live in her house for many years. You should thank your mother, Anthony. Are you insane? Why would I feel thankful for that? Where the hell am I supposed to live now? Go live with your new girlfriend. You can move in with her. What did you say? Oh, don't tell me you didn't think I was aware about your plans to get remarried. I heard you already found someone younger and prettier than me. I already submitted a request for an alimony through my lawyer. You had better prepare that money, Anthony. Ah, you have really lost it, haven't you? Why don't you just go ahead and kill me, huh? Wouldn't that make you feel better anyway? How can you do something so heinous, you vile woman? Ouch, that's harsh, Anthony. How can you be so hostile toward me? And lastly, I'll be demanding child support from you to be paid regularly into my account. So don't even try to wriggle your way out of it. So that is how our 16-year marriage came to an end. All these years, my ex-husband treated me like a maid and caretaker, only to have everything taken away from him by one person he treated with such disdain. Whenever I think of the look on Anthony's face after he lost in court, I feel so much better about myself. After losing his family and inheritance rights, he moved to a small apartment by himself, or so I've heard. Practically broke, Anthony was soon dumped by his much younger mistress. He'd be hard-pressed to find any woman who's willing to marry a divorcee in his 50s who doesn't own a house or have financial wealth. As for me, I've started working full-time at a local nursing home. I even got certified to work as a professional caregiver. After nursing my sick elderly mother-in-law for seven years, I realized that this job is actually my calling. I'm extremely happy to be able to help others in need while living with my two kids. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to see more content.